Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I want to welcome you to a lesson from my sketchbook. This time we are doing a quick and easy dried teasel head. It's really pretty, it's a lot of fun, it's very easy, and you can color it any way you want. Come with me and let's see how this goes. And I'm thinking that a fun autumn looking um, plant like the teasel and I might even hang a little bit of spider web off of it. I'm not sure because I do want to try using some ink tents with this and you know that that might take out using the uh, putting in the spider web. I'm not sure but what I'm going to do to start off with is teasel is the uh, remnant seed head of a plant that grows wild around here, especially in areas near waterways. So, and it's very spiky. It's all spikes. And so what I'm doing right now first is just sort of giving it a base layer of a few spikes sort of in a loose line, not, not a tight straight line, kind of rounded. I'll be swooping up the little leaves around the spikiness. But to start off with, I want to get a bit of the stem in and I'm drawing it down and I'm purposefully making it sort of a dashed and dotted line. The reason why is that there's little spikes that come out where there's pokey spots on a teasel. And if I get these little pokey spots left with some space, they look like they're attached instead of having a line going through it. If I put it here, it looks like it's more around the back. So I can put one right here. You can see it's, it looks like it's more around the back side. So we can put a few spikes coming like that, but then if you put one where there's a gap, it pulls it around to the front. It's kind of fun how things like that work. And now the other thing with the uh, teasel here is that the stems actually have a lot of linear uh, fibers. They go in a very long line. And where there's a, where there's a shadow, or where there's a, where there is a sticker bit, a sticky bit, there will be a shadow on the underside. You don't have to do it to every single one. There's going to be more shadow lines and things like that put in, but for now, that gets us a good start. Now, you notice I say that and then I keep shadowing. I want to get at least some shadow in underneath of where the, where the flower head is going to be. It be. This is the remnants where the seed head is going to be. So then what I'm going to do is basically the same type of thing. I'm going to put a dotted line. So just like when we did the stem, we put sort of a dashed and dotted line. That's because this is where the inner part, where all of the actual little seed areas are. And so there's this sort of pattern on the front edge that you see, because what you're seeing is the tips you're seeing the little tips down here. And there'll be some shadow and stuff like that down in there, but I'm going to do that with color this time. And now as it goes up, because we're kind of looking at it from this angle, sort of down low looking up into it. So at a certain point here, we start giving it these little lines. And they're just little dashed lines. 
and as you put the as you put the pen down you're making strong contact as you lift away you're flicking and you're flicking up and what that does is it gives you this lovely tapered line here at the edge so we're just going to do that really fast actually you don't have to be too worried about making it look like it had a certain pattern to it. I'm sort of working a little bit in an arc around, and these are not even my long pokey bits that are going to be sticking out. This is the, the main dense part of that seed cone. I'm just, just going in like this. Down here in the front, there's some of those that are going like this and working their way around that edge. Some of those little pokey bits come forward and then they work their way up. I'm going to leave this little patch of these right here looking forward towards us. So when the teasels are growing, they are actually a purple flower. Lots and lots of tiny little purple flowers. And honeybees love them. And other, other critters that eat nectar, they actually produce quite a bit of nectar. So now what I want to do is start getting some longer bits sticking out. I was looking at some crafts that you can do with teasels and saw some of the cutest little things. People were using them to make little hedgehogs or to make little owls. I even saw some cats that were made out of teasels. It's so funny to see you know, what people will do with different things and how creative they are with the natural products that are out there that you can just find on the roadside. I think these days, because of all of the people who, you know, we all have to watch our pennies. And I think a lot of us are longing for a simpler, easier time when things didn't cost so much money and where things they just meant more because people made their gifts. So I think that the number of things that are coming out that are going back to those old fashioned toys and old fashioned ideas from, you know, the early early part of the 20th century and the last part of the 19th century, they have kind of a nostalgia to them. Anything vintage basically is new. So what I did here was I just put in a few of the little, they're like the, um, the leaves that had been wrapped around the flower head before it was created. And we could stop right here and we would have a beautiful teasel. But I think I do want to put just like the tiniest little wisp of some spider web down here. And this spider, he didn't know that he was just doing one half of his web. Didn't have any more area. Well, maybe he went up and, and connected into there. By doing it with sort of a dashed and dotted line, you give it sort of that feeling that it is almost sparkling, but it doesn't, but it doesn't really, you know? It doesn't really take a lot to, to get that feeling.
just a little bit. There we go. But the spider is off doing something else, someplace else. I'm not a big fan of spiders. Let's just make this a little bit longer. A few more little pokey bits. Look at that. Oh, that's fun. So now what I want to do is just go in and put a little bit of some color. To let you know first though, I was using a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen and it is Dark Sepia 175. There we go. And it was a size S, so the size small pen. It is permanent and uh, waterproof. Now what I'm going to do is just grab a little bit of some ink tents. We have a, a set of ink tents blocks right here, see? And they've got all of these great colors that are like in that sort of gray, brown, green type of range. And that's what I need to do my fun little teasel. So to start off with, I'm going to use my lightest kind of green-gray color. It's sort of a yellowy, greeny gray. And this is ink, so when it dries, it is, again, this is permanent. It is not going to move again. Once this is dry, it won't move. And you see how quick that went in? That was just one little brush of some greeny gray. And now I want a little bit darker tone here, sort of a real dark brown color, but I'm just putting just, the, I am just putting the tiniest little bit of that dark, dark brown color in there. I don't really want to over, overdo it. There we go, that's nice. Because this is, it is dying, it is, it's ending its season. And we want just the tiniest bit of color. You see what we've got here is almost completely done already. By putting some darker color down here at the base and around the side going up, it made it look like it was shaped more going away, leaving a spot of the brighter color right here in the middle. And then coming up this other side makes that feel like it is coming forward a little bit. And then I want just a tiny bit of this other brown just to send that edge falling away just a little bit to the back. There we go. And we are done with the teasel. I'm going to go ahead and put my little signature on here. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and make sure and leave me a comment and let me know what you thought of this video and if you have any ideas for things you would like to see me try. Go out and do something creative. Remember to take care of yourself so that you can take care of those around you. I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.